the over 70 page manifesto of the Congress party continues to be a political flashpoint between the Congress and the BJP. Reservations, doctored videos have entered this debate that promises only to escalate in the coming days. We'll keep tracking all that for you. But for now, let's talk about phase three of the Lok Sabha poll that will be held on the 7th of May. What are the seats? How are the trends? Here's the latest on poll science. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Poll Science. The third phase of Lok Sabha elections that will take place on the 7th of May presents an interesting bag of possible outcomes for the ruling BJP and the opposition. It has the BJP strongholds of Gujarat, Northern Karnataka that voted for the BJP in 2019, but Congress and the Assembly polls, parts of Konkan and Western Maharashtra that have seen the BJP gaining ground in the last few years, and also Murshidabad, where the Congress thrived all these years. But Adhiranjan Chaudhary, the sitting MP, has a contest with TMC fielding ex-cricketer Yusuf Pathan this time. So what are the interesting seats in this phase? What are the intriguing trends? Let's find out with our data expert and political analyst Amitabh Tiwari. Thank you, Mr. Tiwari, for speaking to NETV. Well, a total of 95 constituencies across 13 states and union territories will go to polls on the third phase of uh, Lok Sabha elections, May 7th. Let's start with Gujarat that has seen the BJP going from strength to strength in the last many years. There's largely a buzz this time that, uh, you know, the fight is about the scale of winning margins because at least four constituencies uh, last time, Navsari, Surat, Vadodara, uh, even uh, uh, Gandhinagar, which is the Home Minister's constituency, saw record sweeps. We saw the BJP slump in 2017 assembly polls, but the Congress performed its worst in 2022, winning just 19 seats. How has the state voted in the last 30 years? So it's a, the BJP stronghold. If you see the last 30 years, the last time Congress won more seats than BJP here was 1984. After that, BJP or Janata Dal plus BJP has won more seats than the Congress party. So it's a stronghold of the BJP. BJP is, is looking at a hat-trick of 26-0. As you mentioned, uh, Gujarat is one of the four states where BJP won 100% of the seats with more than 50% vote share. On 18 of the 26 seats, the victory margin was 2.5 lakhs and above. This time, the Congress hopes that the Kshatriya Rajput anger or disillusionment because of the statement of uh, Purushottam Ropala, helps it to revive its Kham alliance, which is Kshatriya, Harijan, Adivasi and minorities of 1980s, and also hopes that the alliance with Aam Admi Party, which had made significant dent to the Congress vote bank, uh, vote bank helps it to uh, win some seats. But it looks very difficult because Gujarati Asmita is a, is a key factor mm. in Gujarat polls and you have the top two slots, the Prime Minister and the Home Minister coming from this state. So it's, it's going to be very, very difficult mm. for the Congress party and the Aam Admi party to win any seat from here. Uh, it is it is going to be a daunting task for them. Yeah, we also have uh, two ministers, Mansukh Mandavia and Pushotam Rupala, contesting this time. Pushotam Rupala is contesting from Rajkot, and uh, Mr. Mandavia is contesting from Porbandar. There have been talks about uh, anger uh, in the Thakur community, but that is something that uh, I think the leadership has also been trying to ask watch. Um, uh, going further, Mr. Tiwari, give us an idea about this 95 seats that will poll on the 7th of May, because data shows that in 2009 the BJP won 47 of these seats. BJP won 67 of these seats in 2014 and 72 in 2019. So it's been steadily rising. In contrast, the Congress won just 27 seats in 2019, 9 in 2014 and it dropped to 4 in 2019. Yeah. At least 43 seats are there in this space where the BJP, the BJP has won more than twice. So clearly, uh, you know, who has the upper hand here? Yeah, I mean, the data shows it clearly. Even in 2009, when BJP lost the general elections, it had won more than half of the seats on offer and it had won more than uh, almost twice the seats, almost one and a half, two times the seats of the Congress party. So it is clearly a stronghold of the BJP. The Hindi heartland seats are there, the western uh, region seats are here and also uh, seats from Karnataka, which is uh, like BJP's gateway to the south. So these, this is a stronghold of the BJP. If the average margin, if you see in uh, most of the states, will be 20 percentage plus for the BJP. So that requires a very big swing 
from the BJP towards the Congress or other regional parties for BJP to, to, to drop its tally significantly. And these are again largely BJP versus Congress direct one-to-one -one contest seats if you exclude Uttar Pradesh. Mm. So here is where the Congress has to make a significant dent in BJP's tally, otherwise it's, it is not likely to improve its performance on an overall basis. Absolutely. And tell us about the seats that are going to poll in UP, because if you look at Bareilly, uh, you know, this is a seat that the BJP has been winning since 1989. Uh, Santosh Gangwar has been replaced. He's an eight-term MP. You have Main Puri, which is where uh, Dimple Yadav was contesting from. It used to, it, it's, it's still considered a bastion of the Samaj party. So what does the UP situation look like for the, fir uh, for the third phase? Yeah, so if you see the 10 seats, the BJP had won 8 and 2 seats were won by the Samajwadi party including their stronghold Manpuri which they have not lost since 1996. And Sambal is one more seat which they won. However, if you see uh, the Samajwadi party benefited from the alliance with the BSP here because the seats you are mentioning, Ita, Manpuri have significant SC population as well. So if you see 2019, 70% plus Muslims, Yadavs and Jatavs mm. voted for the Mahagad Bandhan. Mm. Now if BSP is not part of this alliance, then this Jatav vote is likely to move away mm. from the Mahagad Bandhan to the BSP. So mm. BSP contesting separately is likely to split the opposition vote as well as Congress cannot be a replacement for BSP because yeah. it, it does not have the same strength. Here again, if you see, the average margin mm. of the BJP is 17% plus, 54% mm. is the average vote share of BJP, whereas 37% is the average vote share of the second rank party, which is largely the Samajwadi party and the Bahujan Samaj party. So, uh, the BJP again is likely to benefit because of the split of opposition votes mm. and the Samajwadi party Congress alliance mm. does not have a, a significant, uh, uh, you can say, a social coalition which they have been able to build hmm. Be because if you have more than 50 percent vote share again the same uh, question arises yeah. can the india block pull votes away from the bjp towards them mm -hmm. and which is that vote block which they are targeting at because the jats also because yeah. some seats are also from mm -hmm. western up and the jats uh, or rather the rld has also moved away from uh, india block to yes. the nda Hmm. So that is that is so. Which is the vote block that the Congress is that the opposition block would be focusing on? So coming to Karnataka, since the northern part of Karnataka is voting, tell us because there's this ongoing controversy over Prajwal Ravana's uh, sex tapes. Does the J JDS have any influence here, uh, and how do you think this controversy impacting the electoral outcomes here? The JDS does not have a significant influence in uh, northern Karnataka, which is Bombay, Karnataka, and Hyderabad, Karnataka. Whatever influence it, it had in the past, that seems to be on the, on the decline. Now, these six steps may not have significant influence in northern Karnataka because JDS is not contesting on any of the seats mm. and it is not a dominant player. However, for the BJP, the bigger worry is that uh, the Lingayat community, which, is, uh, which has a significant population in Bombay, Karnataka, mm. as well as the SCSTs, which occupy or which account for a significant share in the Hyderabad Karnataka region did a move towards the Congress in significant numbers hmm. in the 2023 Vidhan Sabha election. So BJP will have to pull back its, its, its core vote which is the Lingayat votes from the Congress uh, towards itself if hmm. it needs to maintain the tally which is 14 out of 14 and that is going to be a daunting task for the BJP because the implementation of the schemes or guarantees of the Siddharamaya government on the ground have also been good. Hmm. So it's, it's, uh, also a battle of the central government beneficiaries versus the state government beneficiaries. And also regaining the Lingayat uh, vote. Uh, uh, well, talking about, uh, uh, you know, West Bengal, we'll see voting in Malda, Uttar and Dakshin, and also Murshidabad. Murshidabad has had a Congress MP for a long time, seen as a bastion of Adiranjan Chaudhary. And sir, how critical is the Muslim vote here? Because there's been a lot of fight. TMC is seen as the party that commands uh, Muslim votes. How has the BJP done in this uh, particular uh, Murshidabad, Jangipur, Malda area? This is where the Congress also has influence. Yeah, so out of the four seats, the Congress and BJP have one one each and two seats are with the Trinamul Congress. Now due to the split of votes between the TMC and the Congress party, BJP ended up winning one of the Malda seats. Now this time as well the Congress party is not in alliance with the TMC. So there could be a split of mm. the minority vote. 63 percent of uh, Muslims mm. voted for TMC in 2019 and 16 percent for the Congress party. Mm. So if there is a split of vote because 
Congress's stronghold is is this region. If it mm. is to win any seat in West Bengal, it is likely to be coming mm. from this region. So we'll have to see how this pans out. The CA and the NRC could also be dominant issues here, and we'll have to see whether the minority vote consolidates behind TMC like it did in the Vidhan Sabha election, or it splits and they're again giving some advantage to the BJP in terms of. retaining the seat which they have in that area well very quickly sir maharashtra has also uh, you know it has very high profile contests um, uh, narayan rani and uh, the daughter of uh, um, shishil kumar shinde you have sunitra pawar versus supriya sule how do you see that battle sir again it's a the battle of what the traditional voters or who the traditional voters see hmm. as the heir of sharad pawar or as the heir of uh, the thakrees now who has the support of the traditional voters that has not been tested yet mm. so it's a sena versus sena contest in some seats and also an sharad pawar uh, ncp versus ajit pawar ncp in some seats it could also lead to a lower turn not a lack of enthusiasm because many traditional voters are not happy with the fights going on between the families and between shinde and uddhav thakre so we'll have to see whether there is a seamless transfer of votes mm. between the shinde faction to the bjp as well as the ncp ajit pawar to the bjp because that will be crucial and we'll also have to see whether uddhav thakre which not a natural mm. partner to the mba is able to transfer his votes or his party votes to the congress and the ncp candidates there well so many factors uh, are at play there thank you mr tiwari the voter turnout in the first two phases was slower than what was recorded in those seats in the 2019 lok sabha elections which is why the third phase will be keenly watched to know if this is a trend that is set for this election but we are all hoping that it gets broken we'll be back with another episode of poll science tomorrow thank you for watching